This is Dante DiMici reporting from the meth lab. Every city or county had the option of adding a free speech channel called a PEG channel to their cable TV contract. These public access PEG channels do not have to be public funded, but the franchiser does have to provide a hot video jack somewhere so the public can put any video contact that is legal on the cable system. Once this channel is voluntarily established, a city or county does not have the legal right to exercise any editorial control over content. Local authorities can only establish reasonable technical standards. People often ask, why can't the local authorities set up community standards for what is put on the air? The textbook answer is because the Supreme Court of the United States has defined what are free speech rights on a national level. In fact, there is a legal subspecialty called public forum law, which regards PEG channels as a designated public forum with all the protections and privileges of the First Amendment. One of our foundations of our country, that's all, in the late 1990s, the city of Clear Lake included such a public access channel in their cable franchise. They didn't have to, they chose to. But the city administrator at the time didn't seem to understand the concept of free speech as it applied to all the people of Clear Lake and Lake County. This administrator and his political crony did make extensive personal use of this extra equipment that was squeezed out of the cable company for the purpose of free speech public access. The county did not have any provision for public access in their cable franchise. But they were giving programming override privileges on TV8 for their Board of Supervisors meetings. There is nothing in writing from the city of Clear Lake which gives them this privilege, which damages the channel's only regular source of income, a payment 
from Yuba College for their distance learning program. The free override eliminates the college's ability to schedule Tuesday and Thursday classes on the channel. For years, the county contributed nothing toward the operation of TV8. Over the years, Lake County's TV8 has weathered almost continuous censorship attacks starting in 2004. These attacks have taken the form of physical threats against programmers, an attempt to place a $100 broadcast fee on each imported program, reduced plays on late night scheduling of political programming, and indefinite lockdowns of the station by Clear Lake's administrators without any due process or coherent explanation. A pegboard was eventually set up, dominated by politicians and former politicians. This board only modestly supported the station for two years. Then they dropped it out of the city and county budgets entirely, but continued to use the channel solely funded by Yuba College. The pegboard continued to operate as an illegal censorship entity using more and more elaborate subterfuges. Operations were hamstrung, banning most volunteers and killing TVH's internet connection, even after I found a free site for storing our video online. I protested the deadbeat county meeting overrides dominating the channel with the following analogy. <clears throat> Say someone owns a house. There is no dispute about who owns the house. The owner occupies one bedroom and rents out two other rooms. One renter faithfully pays their rent year after year. The other renter puts down a deposit, makes one payment, and then stops paying rent. Even though they show no intention of moving out. Not only are they not paying rent, but they are monopolizing the living room denying its use to the pain renter. The exclusive use of the living room may be an understanding reached on compensation issues for some private exchange with the owner. Nobody knows. When the deadbeat is reminded that they really should be paying rent, 
they respond arrogantly that they will make one more payment. So leave me alone so I can enjoy my room and the common area rent free forever. The paying renter feels like they are being imposed upon. The owner has no stomach for a fight and is ready to default on their mortgage and move out. The deadbeats, the deadbeats internal logic assumes they are entitled to squat rent free until the home is trashed and boarded up. The owner of the house, that's TV8, is clearly the paying renter. Distance learning fee is Yuba College. And the deadbeat enjoying free override privilege is Lake County. I sent this analogy out August 24th, 2012. Only one county supervisor responded, hoping I hadn't sent it out to anyone else. I had. Public access channels that surround Lake County have blossomed in recent years while TV8 has withered under the crushing censorship and policy sabotage. In fact, Willits has made steady progress with less money than what TV8 scratches by on. But Willits is not burdened by the yoke of politics. They are run by a non-profit organization. Lake County and its cities plan to put a mandatory charge on the local cable bill to fund the channel. Whether the cable users want it or not. This is a very unusual move and was spearheaded by two people who were responsible for the most egregious and elaborate censorship attack on our residents' public access channel. This attack was demanded by an out-of-county organization nationally famous for intimidating, weak-willed, or unprincipled politicians. Rather than allow TV8 to continue under government-controlled sham structures or be funded by an unpopular cable charge, the original volunteers of TV8 believe the channel should be operated the way public access channels are legally intended. That is the people's voice, no matter how distasteful to politicians or intolerant mobs. An IRS approved nonprofit that understands the value of this critical 
American right is waiting in the wings to take on this responsibility. All that is necessary is for a real leader to step forward and push the human obstacles out of the way. Are you that leader?